All right, at this time, um, I'm going to open up the meeting of the uh, Redevelopment Authority uh, of Carver for um, September 15th, 2020. It's uh, 10 minutes after five. Um, we're, as of right now, we're missing Brian Abatiello. Um, the, uh, the first uh, item on our agenda was going to be the uh, introduction of our uh, interim town administrator, Rick LaFond. He is unfortunately unable to be here. He's at the Board of Health meeting tonight. So um, uh, we'll have to do that on another day. Uh, item number two on the um, agenda is the vote to accept Will's resignation letter. So I don't know if that's, oh, it, it's, it's the second thing in your packet. Um, effective September 1st, 2020. So I will entertain a motion to uh, accept Will Sinclair's resignation letter. So moved. I need a second for that. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to accept Will Sinclair's resignation letter. Um, any discussion? Uh, well, I wish him well. I don't think we've heard from him since, what, February? Have anybody seen him? No. I, I know he has an inspection job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's down with Dave. Yeah. I think he's still in town, isn't he? I, oh, well. Oh, well. All right, well, I, uh, the, the thing that I would just add is, the, is, you know, thank him for everything he did on, on yeah. the RDA for, for yeah. quite a while. Good to see him go. We see how he had five years left. Right, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> all right, so it's been moved and seconded to accept Will Sinclair's resignation letter. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Approved unanimously. Uh, the next step, uh, the next uh, item on our agenda is reorganization. Uh, and in order to do this, I have to, as, as um, interim chair, uh, I have to relinquish that role, so we, I need a motion to, um, to assign the uh, temporary chairmanship to uh, Jim Walsh. So moved. I need a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to, uh, to shift temporary uh, chairmanship to Jim Walsh for the purposes of uh, reorganizing and choosing a new um, chair, at which time we'll come back and then do the rest of the uh, um, remaining seats. All right. So go ahead and open the floor for nominations for chairmanship. I move uh, to elect uh, Sharon Clark. Wait, what? <laughs> I second that. What? Do <laughs> you want it? Now we can have discussion, right? So we it's have discussion. Been, well, yep. Yes, yeah, I mean, you have to say it's been moved and seconded. Yeah. Moved and seconded. Now we have discussion. All right. Okay, anybody ever thinks for a second that there's any kind of backdoor dealing on these chairmanships? No, none. Um, I, you know, Oh, <laughs> if you could see my face. <laughs> well, I'm hiding mine now. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I just assumed that the vice chair would take over. I am uh, I'm currently chairman of the Conservation Commission. And uh, that's... Oh, I missed that memo. That's enough for, uh, for me, enough. for being a chair. So um, I, I would, uh, you know, when the time comes, I will gladly remain as vice chair, but... Uh, Oh, so now you want to be elected in the number two spot. <laughs> I want to continue as the number two spot. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's our experience. I say we ambush this one over here. She can't see what we're doing. Um, <laughs> will you help me? I'll help you, yes, of course. Okay. All right, I'm good. Duh. Okay, so, so we there was a second. But yeah. oh, I, was a I, I nominated. She, uh, there's a second. We had we had our discussion. Now she has to tell us. You. Right. So we'll, uh, go ahead with the vote on the motion. Aye. Aye. You don't vote for yourself. I'm not voting for myself. But do we need a quorum? Yeah, vote for yourself. Do we, we need, need three it. for a quorum? We need well, it, right? We okay. Need aye. Okay. okay, it can be. It, it could be two zero one, because okay. it's still a quorum. But three, three zero is fine. 
Okay. All right. Now, do we turn it back over? Yes. Oh. You, you relinquish the, the your temporary chairmanship to Sharon, who then um, does the reorganization for uh, vice chair and um, secretary. Secretary. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do we need a motion for that to relinquish? The chairman. No, because you're you're. <laughs> and so she's she's it. Right. Give me a minute. Just let me breathe. Okay. <laughs> you can do it. My God, you're so political anyway. Now it is. Um, okay. I will entertain motions for a vice chair as, I, as part I, of a reorganization. You can interrupt me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there there we go. Is there a gavel that comes with this? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I nominate uh, a vice chair for uh, excuse me, Savory Moore for vice chair. I will second that motion. Thank you. Is there any discussion? No, I'm happy to do it, and I'm, I'll help any way I can. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes Great. unanimous. Great. Um, at this point. As new chair, I am going to, going to defer to the acting old chair, uh, only because he created the um, the agenda. All right, we have to vote for. Uh, oh, shit. okay. See, I'm secretary. That's okay. We'll do the same thing, and he knows all about it. Last right. Year. I so I. Plate. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for treasurer. But all right, I nominate uh, Joanna Layton for uh, treasurer. I second. Vote and now go for the vote. Aye. All in favor and say aye. 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 I aye. accept. Three nothing. Now you can. Con it's yeah. unanimous. All right. Now, since I've, I've, you know, can we do one more? What? Secretary, even though it's a, a position that we have one, but we still oh, we nominate. Still nominate. Yeah, okay. we still nominate. You're so, right. I got hit with that the first year I was on. Right. So huh? I uh, can I make a nomination? I don't know. I'm not too sure yeah. about the last one you did. So. <laughs> Brian Apatello. <laughs> In absentia. I, uh, I will second that. Uh, we have a motion to um, for Brian Apatello as the secretary. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. So. Unanimous. He's on. Very good. Thank you, John. I'll have this down by our next reorganization. Right. Just what July. All right. So now you can uh, relinquish the agenda to me uh, if you'd like. Now I would, if if it if it's okay with the rest of the board, Joanna, um, I would like to relinquish the um, the agenda at this time to to Vice Chair Moore. All right. Fine. Thank you. Um, item number four on the agenda is to discuss the procedures for filling the vacant position now that Will is gone. So here's an elected position. Right? It's an elected position, but it's an appointed position to fill the rest of Will's term, uh, I, I, for one year of Will's term, I believe. Yeah, one year. And, until the next election. And then they run, I believe, for the balance. For the, then, then someone runs for which the balance of his term. Which would be four years. Which yeah. would be four years, four years in April. So um, I guess it would need to be posted on on the uh, town website and on the list that's posted in the uh, select board's office and wherever else that list is posted as an open position it should probably be put on the website yeah please we had uh, an issue last time with uh, bob melbourne he had an issue because he felt that we didn't broaden it enough Right, but it should be on the website on the on the opening page, mm -hmm. you know, as because it's it's brand new and it's an important position uh, in light of what's going on. Um, and, so. and I think the procedure is a dual appointment. Which yes, select. So like yeah. we, can I just interrupt? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sir. Go ahead. Uh, we met collectively the select board and the RDA. Savory at that point in time came up forward with two other people. Uh, uh, we were filling two positions. We were filling the DHCD position as well as this interim position. Right. And the person, I can just remember that person sat like in the middle on a school desk, right? Yeah. And offered the rationale why they wanted to be in either that one or the other one. And uh, we had a post, Jim, because it's a collective meeting. Each RDA has to uh, post. Uh, as well as the select board has to post. Once, once they're applicants. Right. Had to do that with the planning board a couple of times. Right. 
So I okay. guess the question, it's a, excuse, me. excuse me, town, one more thing. Okay. Town administrator took care of it. That was Milanowski. And it was about a month, month or two, was it? Yeah. Uh, because they had to, you know, advertise and gather out. And so, and Milanowski held it open quite a while because he wanted to make sure we had at least three candidates, which I think we did. We did. Um, in this case, we're only seeking one candidate, so I don't Right, know. but there's, I mean, if, if one's all we get, then that's okay. As long right. as, it, as, as the town administrator is okay with it and the joint board meeting. Is, is okay with that, but obviously it would be better to have more than one candidate to make a, right. a, a I don't know how choice. long we can go without filling that void. Actually, that was quite a while. We were being blamed by a lot of people for not meeting and making an attempt. Uh, now we have a different excuse, it's COVID, but I don't know. Well, I enlisted, you want to make this happen at the first of the year or something? I don't know. No, I think we move right away. I okay. think we move right away, but then we also have to coordinate as a, with a joint meeting. So we meet once a month. They meet twice a month going uh, into select board. the select board. Yeah, generally twice a month. Right, but I'm... And do we have, do we have their meeting schedule? Yeah, it's uh, posted. I think that it's, That's right. it's, it's every. I have to it's, take a look at the, at the. It's the first and third Tuesdays of the month, correct? Right, it's kind of off kilter from. They've been switching that up because well, they've got one special, Friday. So. The special is, they're working on the special with articles and all kinds of stuff. Yes, like that. I understand that. But, I mean, there's. That's something that we can deal with after we hear from Jim or right. from Rick LaFond that there are candidates out there. Okay. That's the time we should coordinate that okay. meeting because. That, yeah. Sounds good. Well, today is September 15th. We have a special town meeting on October 20th. So should we aim for a meeting in November? Okay. Sounds good. Us as a group or? So a joint? The joint well, meeting. I, I, yeah, I the joint think, meeting. Yeah. I think we should. I mean, if we get two applicants, we don't want to make it appear that we're leaving it open indefinitely. Oh, no, no. no, 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 no. As, as soon as we have applicants, I think we should be notified and we will we'll set a date then. Advertise, say, for three weeks, and then yeah. okay. I think close so. it. That, sh that should get ample time for interested people. And then um, then we could, you know, usually the select board also gets the applications. And then, right. Um, OK, so I, I wrote okay. down a joint meeting in November. Is that realistic? So are That's probably realistic. But we're this, we meet the second Tuesday, right? Yes. Is that what we're going to do, second Tuesday? Well, okay. we meet the second Tuesday, so that's the 10th. I don't know when the select board meets. I think our meeting, our joint meeting, would be in addition to our regular meeting, because I think we would just go there, Okay. because it would be later. It would be 7 o'clock when the select board right, meets. Right, exactly. We would, or 6.30, so we're both together. Right. Um, so right. I, I think that that, that would be uh, independent of our regular meeting. Um, Jim, can you make a note to see if we can make that November 10th thing work? Is that too late, or do you want to try? I think for, with October, we've got this special coming up. Yeah, it's a lot yeah, going I would, on. Yeah, I would, what, you know. Yeah, and actually. Everything's dependent upon getting applicants. Yeah, OK, right. so can you just check to see if we can focus on the, a November 10th joint meeting and check with Elaine to see if that needs to tentatively be put out on the agenda or okay. in a save us a space or something? Right. Well, I we found with the planning board, first of all, we just waited till we got some candidates, so we just have enough time to advertise. And I think if we kind of gave it a period of three weeks, get the applicants in, and then uh, from there, between the RDA and, and the select board, come up with a, a meeting date. They, just, try, they try to do it when they're having their meeting, though, right? Right, yeah. So I'm thinking that in October, their meetings are going to be a little bogged up. We're going to be utilizing meeting space coming up with the special town meeting and. Right. Um, and just as a just a little bit of interest, the um, the meeting has changed the town annual uh, the special town meeting. It was originally scheduled for October twentieth, but that's right in the middle of early voting, so they had to bring it oh. forward, and oh. so it's going to be a um, streamlined town meeting uh, on October fifteenth, which is a Thursday. Oh, 
And um, this is the week before then. Right, so they're going to do a streamline where they're going to just have just kind of the money articles that they absolutely need to, in order to set the tax rate and do some other financial Okay, matters. I got you. I got you. I used another word to refer to that, and I got a big laugh today, so. <laughs> I referred to it as a stripped down thing. Yeah. <laughs> People's imaginations went wild at the well, uh, department head meeting this morning. We might need more space in the, uh, tent, in the uh, meeting hall then. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's what I'm thinking. Um, because I like playing devil's advocate from time to time. Um, it used to be my job. <laughs> you can still do it. It used to be. Uh, used to be. Right. Um, I'm thinking that we should, we as a group, the four of us, um, should have our uh, meeting in a month on the on our the, October on, meeting. on our October yeah. meeting as is. Okay. Yeah. Then. If possible, if we have applicants, I would I would say that we might want to try to have the Invite. joint meeting on the third of November. Okay. No, that's no, that's that's election day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Can't do that. October third. Yes, it did. Uh, November. 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 Okay. okay. November third is the uh, big day. Because what I was trying to do was to have. Um, have the applicant approved before our November meeting so he or she could join us in the November meeting. Okay. Okay, well our, our November our October meeting would be the thirteenth. Right. So all right, well that's the same week as if you they're doing the stripped down version. So whatever the okay now Jim if you could make a note to see when the selectmen meet after the 19th, October, after October 19th. Scratch out what I just said. <laughs> okay. You get used to it. Right, but, but when we meet again on the 13th of October, we should have a better idea where we, we stand with applicants. Idea. Yeah, we've got any candidates. We have any candidates. Okay. Um, uh, so moving. we'll be going to make the appointment sometime before our meeting on November 10th. November 10th. If possible. So we need to know what the availability of the select board is after the 19th. Right. But again, with the, with the um, streamlined, oh no, they, sh if it, they should be over by then. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it would be late October. Um, all right. Moving on, um, item number five on the agenda, update on ongoing projects. Uh, and that's Jim. Okay, so haven't heard any communications from Mr. McLaughlin or uh, Mr. Delholm from Route 44 Development. So haven't got any of that. Um, and before a column, I kind of wanted to wait till we had this meeting so if there was any questions that, you know, the board here had, um, then I can present them to either Mr. McLaughlin or Mr. Delholm. Uh, regard to 94 Street, um, that was posted on the um, state website. We did not get any responses to that. Um, but I think uh, as uh, there are a couple of projects on adjacent properties, yeah. one's you know they've done the site clearing for yeah the other one's been approved and I, you know they're putting their you know getting all their more detailed plans excuse put together. me uh, through you uh i i see where the glass place is there's one there mm -hmm. and then there's before us there's another one is that a second does that lot been sold as well so if you have the glass place um as a reference on lillian way so kind of between North Main Street and the glass place, there's one lot that has gone through a special permit, no, actually a site plan review process, and been approved uh, for craftsman treatment or workman space or whatever you want to call the thing. All right, then adjacent to it, Stop another lot. Up the hill a little bit. So to the left yep. and on Forestry at the very beginning of yeah. uh, Forestry, the, they started the site clearing already. That's the uh, Nutrien, which is P 
people call it the Agway, but it's the new train that's currently over on Plymouth Street. Um, they're relocating from that location to this new location. Okay. And then I can't remember if Jack Williams has another lot right next door, and then it's the RDA lot. Um, but with the development going on there, I think that will help spur further interest in that lot. So the one adjacent to us, has that been sold also? Um, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Because I know all that was subdivided by Williams Brothers. Right. Actually, um, if you guys would like to know that Williams Brothers sold uh, to EXP LLC, that, you know, I can hardly read, number six, whatever the lot is, Get the price, guys, what we originally asked for, 262005 So, a oh little bigger than what we own, but we started out with that number, right. and then we kind of got a little bit scared. Well, that was... We never, other than the one they offer, we never had a solid offer on the property, no matter um, what we asked for. That's correct. Okay. Correct. I thought it brought out a little bit to you. When was that sale? When did that sale close? Do you know? I don't. It was closed. I don't mean on, to make you read more, but uh, seven twenty-one. Okay. In the middle of just COVID. it was recent. Yeah. Okay. Recent. July. Yeah. All right. So the money must have been in place because I think that you know with with COVID, I think things are going to slow down. Just money's money's tight. You know, unless unless people have deep pockets. Well, I, I do auctions and that's like zero, but I'll tell you what, when forbearance and evictions open up after October 17th by the state, unless they vote to extend it, it's going to be something. Hmm. Be I, something. I'm a title examiner and I've never been busier. Really? In well, that's homes, right? Residences? It's, it's a lot of homes and new construction and commercial development. And commercial. Well, that, I mean, commercial follows the people. Oh, commercial as well. Yeah. Out of my mind. Yeah, commercial follows the people, and they're all getting out of the cities. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it is. Well, anyway, carry on. All right. Uh, so I'll make a note with that. Bills payable. We have uh, outstanding invoices. Do we? Ha I part of my packet were were the appraisals. Yeah. So we had the appraisals. I think there was. Um, one appraisal that we're going to vote on on March 17th, the original date, uh, way back when, and and then COVID hit, so um, that's still hanging out there. Okay. So, um, Excuse me, Jim. Was that to be done, or do we need to pay? No, I think that's to be done. To so be they done. submitted us a proposal. Okay. And. Both Deb and I are looking at it and we're saying, okay, do we, do we pay this thing or do we <laughs> owe money or are yeah. we in trouble because the fiscal year changed over? And we said, oh no, we don't have to worry about the fiscal year because so it's, it's, it's something to be done that we never voted on. And was this the appraisal in the estate lot? I believe it was the estate. The estate lot that was kind of in the back? Yeah, so the... Yeah, the, yeah, the stump? I believe it was... I believe there was a Mel a state of Melville. A state of Mel yeah, Melville. Melville right. Yeah, and um, so he, uh, George McLaughlin, I found out the law firm that was handling it. He contacted the law firm, and they they said that they were not interested in selling the property. So he wanted to go ahead with the uh, appraisal on that, and then um, uh, you know have the redevelopment authority consider taking it. Okay. So. I'm not sure until we've actually brought Mr. McLaughlin back in or had a very solid update um, whether we should proceed too much on expending funds or we were going to vote on, refresh, um, we were going to vote on ordering another appraisal or ordering uh, the first appraisal of the Melville property. Yeah, I believe in that case it was an appraisal for the Melville property. The, a first appraisal. Right. And we had a proposal for that. And so, um, yeah, and I agree, I would suggest holding off until I, we, I, I we kind of catch up with where McLaughlin You know, if, if Mr. Walsh hasn't had any inquiries or emails from Mr. McLaughlin or the Route 44 Development Group, 
saying, hey, when's the RDA going to meet? Um, I think it, it behooves us just to take a step back and under whatever circumstances the market is now dictating to them or where they are with, with the clearing um, or what they were having done, I think we should just um, put a hold on put a hold on expending anything as far as yeah ordering yeah. appraisals or anything yeah. like that of, of land because um, and I agree with Sharon because they need to come in that we need to know what's going we on. need to know they need to tell us at the yeah. same time the town administrator needs to be present as well right as because he's stepping in uh, interim or otherwise um, and so we're kind of like in the gray area, if you want. Yeah, we're very. <laughs> yeah, going going back to the urban renewal plan, I think we need to uh, to extend a, an invitation to George to be here on the 13th of October. And. Um, would Would you like me to do that as the new chair? No, no. no that Jim would be is the executive Jim, Jim is, oh, is, we, is, forgot the, we forgot to vote him. That's another. I forgot that. That's an executive director. We do usually vote one. Remember, we had such okay. a problem. No, yes, guys, because there was because it was between um, what's her name and Stephen. There was a vote last last year, uh, let, uh, back in the fall. After I'd been with the town for a couple months, there was a vote uh, on that. Okay. Yeah. Brought, so. But I think that I think reorganization rules are that we reorganize every year right after town meeting, so we have to do it again. So I guess we can. Um, it, it, Backtrack to reorganization. Can we re? Yeah, can we? Yeah, we have to backtrack and. It's on the agenda. Reorganization. We just forgot right. it, so we can still do it. Okay. Well, okay. let's finish this discussion and then. All right. Okay. So we'll start making backtrack as an agenda item. <laughs> yeah. Because it needs to be some time here. Um, yeah. So I think we should get George in here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and you know I I he's got to come fully armed with where he stands with everything. Uh, on the fill, on the on the potential um, leasers, um, are the plans still going forward? Uh, are the plans still what they were thinking? Right. Uh, you know, yeah, we need a full and complete update. A full report. Yeah. Period. Uh, uh, yeah. Everything in the world today is 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 moving towards people ordering online and getting stuff delivered at home. So, um, right. Is there an opportunity for Carver there? Well, he, he's going to be a distribution warehouse. It, it seems to me that this is the the opportune time to get this thing going as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. If in fact uh, that's what he's still um, oh, still yeah. trying to do. Uh, yeah. Right. Exactly. And if and if that if you could give him our dates of our next meeting. Yeah, the thirteenth. That, that would October be possible. 13. Yeah. Five p.m. Yeah. yeah. Is there any? Um, Reason to wait till the the new member comes aboard? I don't think so. Okay. No, we need to get. No, we need to know. We need to go forward. Okay, that's fine. that's fine. And we can always bring him back. Yeah. But I I don't want to wait till well, November to find out what's going on. Oh, it's no. been too and, long. And actually, when the new member comes aboard, we'll have a a, a starting place for to to yeah. give them the information that that they need to get up to speed on. So up to speed. And we may be able to eliminate some of it. You know. Right. Um, all right. So. All right, and we're finally, on a, we're on a hold for any further um, expending any further appraisal fees or anything. And yes. And we're asking George to come in and give us a complete update. Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, the last last bullet point under uh, item five on the agenda is there is there anything new that we should be aware of that you yeah. see coming down? Nothing to my knowledge at this time. Yeah. I okay. haven't seen anything. All right. Yes. Then I guess now we can backtrack to reorganization. Yeah. And this is the position of executive director. Who yes. Are, you know. um, I would like at this time I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Jim Walsh. Second. 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 All right. So Joanne, I mean uh, Sharon, your your chair. So. I was wondering, do we need a motion to take nominations? What's the procedure? You can make that motion. I make that motion. Or, or I'll, I'll... What's the deal? No, I don't think so. No, you no, just you say, well... I've... Take nominations. Take nominations. Take nominations. Yeah, so I... I... Uh, so we have a, a Jim Walsh nominated in a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 
Okay, now back, back to the agenda. Um, item number six, the uh, interim t town administrator to update the RDA on his involvement slash knowledge of the uh, URP and any questions. Right, so I had a uh, talk with him today and um, he really hasn't received any kind of briefing um, on what's been going on with the, you know, the urban renewal plan and with anything going on but with Mr. McLaughlin. Um, I know uh, Michael was heavily involved when he was here. That, that seemed to be a specialty of his, um, getting involved in economic development projects. Uh, but uh, Rick said he would be happy to c come to the meeting, you know, the next meeting with Mr. McLaughlin here and, and have that help um, kind of provide a briefing and update to him as well. Okay. Um. If I may, uh, Jim, um, I looked at the executive really real quick. We had um, uh, KP Law was involved on a situation they were looking into. Um, uh, McLaughlin was like secondary, but the primary people were KP Law. Uh, there was one particular piece of property, and that we. We'd like right. to is have that, an update on that as well. Well, is that related to the Borofsky property? Yes, that's correct. Right. I think if we had, you know, Mr. McLaughlin come in, he could provide us with that update. I know okay. they, there was some I form of... I think a portion of this discussion was executive, executive yeah. session, so I think we should cease that. Right. We're not, we're not planning on going into executive session this time, but maybe we will next time. But I think it... At, at this point, we, we can put a halt to this discussion because that is ongoing litigation, as far as we know. Mm -hmm. Or when last we discussed it. Right. I Correct. 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 Yeah. So, so George, just George has to come in with all the information that he knows regarding all the properties he needs to acquire. Mm -hmm. Can Can you ask um, Mr. Lafond if he can? I don't know if he has access to the previous town administrator's emails. Um, but I'd like him to do a search uh, for any and all relevant relative emails because that might be a place to start for wherever it was left off and what um, information might have been awaiting or forthcoming. Yeah, I don't know. Is are they privileged to that when you leave? Not if they were on the town server. Yeah, town town emails are public They're domain. Public. Okay, everything on. Carver Dog, Carver MA, whatever. Yeah, so anything that went to and from that. Okay. I mean, we got a few at our last meeting, I think. Yeah. Um, so right. I just, want, I just want any update. Any, anything that's. That's a good one. That's a good one, Sharon. That's any, good. Anything that's in the file. Yeah. Um, right. Particularly, but not exclusively, anything after February 11th, which yeah. was really our last meeting. And there was ongoing discussions, obviously, after that, but before Michael left. Right. So, and, and we have we have no idea what was happening then. If there was any correspondence between the previous town administrator and our previous um, chair, I, I mean, right. we have nothing. So, if there was right. anything that came, say, from the time Mr. Malinowski was leaving, or Anasty was leaving and actually left, um, we just need some kind of what it, whatever's official. We would like to have it, mm -hmm. right. okay. and he needs to see it. Right, so I, I would think that Mr. LaFon could also, uh, on the carver.org uh, email site, look, on, look under Will's uh, email address, mm -hmm. too, to yeah. see if there's correspondence that maybe Mr. Milanowski wasn't involved with, but that dealt with the uh, URP or anything RDA related. All right, thank you. All right. Anything else we'd thank like you. to get you to do on this? Anything, no. anything else we'd like to give Jim to do on this? I don't think so. No, I, <laughs> I think we're good. We that's, want to that's catch enough. up from where we left off right. on that property. Yeah. And if those could be, if, if there is anything that Mr. LaFon feels we need to know, if that could be included in our packet before our next meeting. Oh, I have one. This is not on that item. Can we back up uh, to 94 Street? I have a question. Okay. Okay. We, when they advertised, um, Sharon had gone to the Board of Appeals. 
and that was registered. But they had to do something. What something was going to leave it us in November. It expires after a year, and, and that would have been November because I saw it. I read it over here. I think I think it went to record in November. We we made the ZBA made the decision. I believe in August. It beat the appeals period about a year ago. So technically, that um, variance has probably expired. So my question to you, uh, as you serve on that board, um, what's the next step for us? Because that takes the zoning and reverts back to 150. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it was. It just reverts back to being possibly unbuildable by current zoning laws. Okay. So we'd have to. We, we can we can go back to this. Let me let me look it up. But I believe you can ask for an extension of a variance, or you can go to you can go to the ZBA and make make a case, and they can extend it. Okay, then we should do that. So we might have to look into doing. That. And, and, right. and the question I have is, how long is this extension? Because if it's six months, that's going to help us. Well, it 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 might only be that. Um, and is that a redefine through the registry again? Yep. Okay. One hundred and seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, what's there's the application fee and. Well, I, I got it. I printed notice. it all out. Yeah, that's well, what. I noticed to the abutters and everything we expended before. Yeah. Um, that's okay. We need a lot of money. Anyway. Yeah, I think we may have to revisit the price on that. Yeah. Next, because next meeting. I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Because if there's development going on over there and the town needs to recoup a certain amount of money, and then if we make some money, that's fine, but the town needed to recoup, what, about $40,000 between the taxes and right. fees and things. If it's a case of remove it and move it on, maybe even as, before we take it through zoning again, maybe one of the abutters wants to buy it at maybe a reduced rate because now it's not really a buildable lot. Okay. And they're gonna tap it on to whatever's okay. there, so. Yeah. All right. Is it easier to get an extension than it is to start over? Yes. Okay. I, I would think that we should probably proceed with trying oh, to get an extension. I'll do both. Do you just seek yes. the extension? I think yeah, so. That's so let me, let me look up those bylaws. Yeah, okay. I would say that too. So let me look up those Yeah, just in case the abutter something. doesn't want to buy it. It's, it's still exactly. a buildable yeah. lot. Exactly. We can just throw it back up there and maybe revisit the price. Yeah, revisit the price. That's what I was thinking. Right. Okay. Okay, Mr. Weiss, you're going. All right, next. Um, just uh, number seven is confirming the terms of office remaining for each member. Uh, Joanna, you expire next year? Yeah, uh, I intend to continue to uh, serve on this committee. Uh, I'd have to pull papers and get the necessary uh, signatures. But I plan on, on but coming But you plan back. on running? Okay, yeah, I'm coming back. Okay, very good. Um, I am the uh, DHCD appointee. Um, I, mine expires next year as well. Um, I don't know what the procedure is since I'm not an elected person. I'm the, you know, from the, the governor's office appointed me. Um, I would like to remain mm -hmm. as the DHCD appointee. So, um, if we get clone, can we clone your letter from last time? I don't know what the procedure is. Well, clone the letter. Just write to them. Well. Well, well, I'm sure the town well, administrator. Right. Well, yeah. I was going to suggest that I'll send an email to the town administrator. Uh, let them know that your your DCHD appointment, your term expires uh, next year, 21. Right. And then that you would like to be reappointed, and then that way it gives ample time for them to right find out what the procedure is. Right. Yeah. I don't know if there are limits because it is a a, a state appointment. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, you know, am I allowed to run, do this again or do what I have to, 
go a different. Here? No, we don't have to. No. I don't know what. Uh, see, I, this is something we need to find out. There, it's a different procedure than than and, getting uh, elected. And Tom Clerk is too new. We couldn't ask her either because she was involved a lot. Lynn was involved the last time. Do you have that letter? I got everything. Okay, great. Maybe you could, because Jim wasn't here. You could give Jim. A well, it's got to be in the files. Ask, huh? It's got to be in the files in the town in the in the town administrator's you think so? files. Oh, yes, because right. well, that Jim, was all done you can through. Look it up if you can't find it. You can ask Savory. He's got a copy of it. Yeah, I mean it was everything because I had like a seventeen or eighteen page um, form I had to fill out uh, oh, yeah? with uh, oh, conflict wow. of interest. But it was easy because everything, it, it was more looking to see if my employment had anything to do with what I'd be ruling on. Oh. And it was retired, retired, <laughs> retired. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty simple. Maybe just a quick, would it expire at the end of the fiscal year? So like June 30th or? No, it was January, I believe. At the, at the end of the, December at the calendar the year. Yeah, the end calendar, calendar year. End of the calendar year. Yeah. Um, so uh, Brian's um, Brian's expires in 2022. We'll have to ask him at the next meeting. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to put that onto the um, agenda. Um, and Sharon, you're uh, you have three years left. No one was more surprised than I was to see that date. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're going to stay, Karen, Sharon? Okay. Good girl. Yes. All right. Um, moving on. Financial reports. Well, I can't see too good, and I can't read. So the first thing is the project status. Uh, you have that separate in your packet. We've gone through it year after year. Um, basically, where, it's, where anything was closed, it's been signaled that way, so the very first page is closed. The second page is the active, and that all pertains to URP. And so you, you want to you know, pay some attention to this. Um, you can see where the pluses and the minuses are and where we allocated the money that was spent. Um, you can see how much interest we gathered, which wasn't a hell of a lot. Um, and the balance today is $2,556.70 as of the end of 2019. That is for what? For which one? So, excuse me? What, what, where is that balance from? I, I can give you the whole project list, okay? Oh, okay. I'll, give you, I'll give you the whole thing. Okay. Um, if you turn to the third page, um, it talks about uh, it's active as of 2020, and it's 94 or so. Oh, okay. So there's the detail of what we started with, um, and we put it on the market as 210,000, pretty realistic. We took it off of 2017. Uh, then we made another offer to once uh, we received an offer for 170, and then we put it back on the market on the 20 on 2018 for 200,000, and oh, thank you for much. six months uh, on July there to date there was no offer. I believe at that particular time, Brenda Titus was titled as you can see. To be the developer, uh, developer, the uh, real estate agent. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Milanowski stepped in and blew the lid off of having her and his rationale. You know, I'm going to lend something here that I'm going to take an action. Before Milanowski, Mr. Milanowski came and blew everything away. I had spoken to the Attorney General's office and uh, I had said to them, you know, I'm a real estate agent, could I sell the property, you know, instead of uh, Brenda? And the Attorney General called me back and said, yeah, you could, but you're going to recuse yourself if you come into these meetings, number one. The other thing is, that you should know that the redevelopment has special non-conflict powers. 
In other departments, there's conflicts on certain things. We don't have those conflicts. And he tried to make me aware of the fact that we don't have conflicts. We can do different things than other people can do. I'd never asked him since Mr. Milanowski interjected about it can only be on the registry, but I'm going to take that action upon myself to recall the Attorney General's office and hopefully get the same person I spoke with before and ask him about this circle of events that have been going on and see if we can negate and go back to what we did before utilizing a real estate agent. For example, I'm a real estate agent today. What's wrong with me giving that as a referral to another real estate agent? That's my point. Can, can we do that? Or do we have to comply with the way Mr. Milanowski told us we need to go through the registry and auction? Well, Mr. Milanowski presented the opinion of KP Law. It wasn't his idea. That was KP Law that read what the laws are and said that as this property had to go through the registry. One difference, we're redevelopment. We have different powers. But I'm sure that KP Law knew that. Oh, well, I'm going to make sure because I'm going to, if you don't mind, on my own as treasurer and concern about the movement of this property. The only thing that I would caution you to do, if, you, if we agree to let you do that, is to, is to cite what the town council I would. has said. I would. You know, don't say that the town administrator said you can't do this. Say, we received a judgment from our town council saying we can't do I this. Would. Here is what they said. All right. Can we circumvent that? Right. Exactly. So. No, I would do that. I, I'd go one further. You have to send them um, the handout that he gave you. That he gave. I, I wasn't on the board yet, but. I don't know. Is it, I have a, I don't. Do you think? Do you, I don't know. I'll have to ask if they accept paperwork. I mean, usually it's all verbal. They look into the law. They take your name and number in 48, 24, 48 hours. They call you back. And you're, you know, you're on that docket, whatever. Whether they can look at a paperwork, I don't know. I mean, a KP Law, if I cited what uh, Jim said, I mean, Savory said, that lawyer, whoever's working with me, ought to be able to understand the law just as well as KP Law, if it, this is a valid law. He didn't make it up. Right, but I think what your question would be to the Attorney General is does, does your membership or does the fact that the RDA is the owner of this property um, make it so that we don't have to follow that law? What, yes. What do we have to follow? Yes, right. exactly. Do we have to follow what was given to us? And I'll explain in the background with the KP law. Or... Does someone still have that in writing? That I do. Yeah, so, well, but, yeah we, they can give it to us in writing. No, well, no, no. I'm asking the 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 decision on KP Law. Right. Uh, yeah, I got a hold of it. Um, I wasn't on the board yet, but it's language I speak. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I have it. I, I'm sure I do too. <laughs> Yours is probably. I think I have it. It's I got boxes. Maybe, and if I, could you send that to me, um, and then that way I can also okay. have something to reference. Okay. And, she, and then, Sharon said she would do that. Um. Here's my concern, is that your, you know, we could authorize you to speak on behalf of the RDA, but we're not in control of the information that you give, and I don't know that we get a written report back. You will. They will. Their answer will be in writing, and they okay, can send it, it back. It has to be. Oh, yeah. It have to be, and is your only concern as to whether we can list this on the multiple listing? Yeah, yeah. Rather than registry, because it's it's done nothing. It just absolutely sits there. We don't have anybody pushing uh, to try to sell this particular piece of property. Yeah, we can go and start talking. Jim can, if you want to elect Jim, to go and talk to the current people that have bought those other two properties to see if they're interested in acquiring. We can do that. I mean, we don't have 
we don't have the, a relationship like a real estate agent has. You, you know, you're not advertising MLS. You get, no one is seeing it. You don't have a sign out there. If I, it's just like dead. If I remember correctly, it, the the sticking point with what Mr. Milanowski was presenting is that no one can make any money off the sale, so a commission cannot be paid. Oh yeah, um, if you auction it off, the person who buys no, it. The, the information that he gave us, gave the board, was that the sticking point is that on a town owned property, no one can make any money. I, I could be wrong. I need to go back and read it. What, is that, what do you mean nobody can so make that any money? So that a real estate agent cannot make um, commission on the sale. So that if you sell it for $50,000 and they're um, commission is 10%, and she cannot get a check for $5,000. Well, we also have an MOU with a management fee of uh, 10%. So well, how, did, how, did, how does that go home? Well, I don't, I don't know where. Well, the, you know, what, town meeting gave us the, gave us well, what I'm saying is that in the information that he gave us, I think the sticking point was that no one can make any profit off the sale of a town-owned piece of land, not individual. Like I say, I'll go back and we do it. Well, we're going to have to go back and yeah, read right. through it. We'll um, read through it. And we'll read through it again to make sure that it specifically references the RDA. Okay. okay. So, so, so uh, I'd, I'd, we should put this back on, on as a discussion point. Yeah, I think we should table it and put it on the agenda for yeah, our next I think meeting. It's been on the agenda, every agenda I've ever seen. Okay. Oh. So. Well, no, I mean we need to get the we need to get the paperwork so Jim is up to speed on it. And, yeah, I'll get and, that to, to Jim tomorrow. Okay. Um. So you want clarification that we cannot use the, the MLS? Oh, basically. Right. Right. Exactly. Is that okay. And if, if we follow the KP, I believe it talks about uh, you can't have an auction. That's another alternative. Um, I have to go back and read it. It's been two years. Anything else? Uh, well, we're still on. Uh are we done with project tracking? Oh, well, all right. I'll go real quick. Okay, that was, uh, let's see, let's turn some pages. That's closed and closed and closed and closed. And uh, the Waterview Village one, uh, that we put liens on the various pieces of property. Um, I would have to go back and make an effort, which I should, uh, to find out if these people have sold their properties. Um, it kind of got, gets lost, uh, even though there's a lien on there. They kind of, when you own, you don't have like, um, uh, just a piece of paper saying you own this. I mean, it's such a thing, you just, it's a crazy transaction. It's not like title and all this other stuff. Um, we did, uh, I think we did, did I tell you we received everything from uh, the town that I, is that? Did I miss a page? I, did I not see something? Um, uh, the town, uh, Mr. Milanowski made sure we received our money here. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, it says, uh, it's one, two, three, fourth page. Uh, the town administrator, uh, we received our money 4700 and we also received another check. In, in addition, it was combined uh, 4000 So we received $8,700, and that closed that up. So Anna, can you point me to the page you're referring to? Yeah, it, um, it's the one I was talking about on 90 Forest Street. Flip that to the next page. The top. You got it? Uh, it's it looks like this. Okay, I have black and white. Uh, <laughs> oh, black and white. Yeah. All right. Uh, at, uh, yeah, it's project status close. It says uh, 
2015 to 2019 municipal site review fire school. Jim, that's fine. And it was it was five thousand and and forty seven hundred, not four thousand. So it was ninety seven hundred dollars. No, for eight thousand seven hundred because right underneath it, the master plan they gave us, he gave us a four thousand dollars. So the check oh. itself was for eight thousand seven hundred dollars. Oh, okay. It was a combine of the two. All right. Okay. You see that, Jim? So our balance come from town is four thousand eight fifteen twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we got that. We got it. Okay, great. Yeah. And that would end the tra project track. <coughs> okay. That's, that ends the project track. All right. So next up is the treasurer's report. Okay. I ran uh, January to August. Um, the last transaction we had was February. And then we had another check we had, I guess it hung around for Susan and then that got paid in, in May <coughs> for $75. Uh, on the other side of the savings as well as URP, basically it was interest. Do you have this uh, piece of paper like this, uh, the 20th, up to? Me? Shannon, yeah, Shannon, um, yeah. Susan. Yes. Okay, um, you're all set with the yep. numbers? Yep. Okay, so uh, we have, bottom line, uh, checking account, $190.59. The savings account, bottom line, $30,317.62. The interest year to date was $37.22. Now, if you looked at the interest all the way from this January all the way down, we're, we're only collecting 257, 2057 cents. We started with, in the beginning of the year, 8,098 cents, and the rationale is the interest rates have dropped to just about small, you know, one percent, less than 1% or something like that. I forgot what it was. And the URP side, it's uh, pretty consistent, six cents, six cents, six cents. The, vet, the end of that was, uh, let's see, in uh, March, we had a check. And the check came and it was for $5,000. And that was to pay for um, the on call, the in maybe happening, which we just uh, said that wasn't gonna, we weren't gonna make any additional investments until we hear back from George uh, for the pay the new appraisals that we anticipated coming up. So that was, um, that's, that's what beefed that up. So we have $7,557.37 and the, we know, uh, the uh, interest was 67 cents. So that takes care of that. All right, um, since we do not have two people who can sign, unless we, if we do this tonight yeah. with, the, with the bank, yeah. can, can one of us sign the checks yeah. as well? No. Not until it goes back to the bank, right? Right, but you could always come back in a day or two or whatever if you wanted. Well, maybe you could. What's the difference? We'll yeah, just tell Deb. Matter. Let's just, yeah, hold it. We'll tell Deb. I'll tell Deb when to send the Don check out, okay? All right, so. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. The day you submit it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, so, so the, the, it looks to me that we're going to have to move money into the checking account, yeah. correct? Because we, we have an invoice from Valerie for 325 and we only have 190 Exactly, yep. So, um, you can make an action for me to move some money out of the savings side uh, into. Um, what do you want to do? A thousand? Five hundred? Whatever. I would say a thousand. A thousand sounds good. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we uh, that we transfer one thousand dollars from the uh, URP savings account to the URP checking account. No, not URP. Not our, our, oh, from the uh, municipal the side. RDA. Uh, savings yeah. account, not you, RDA savings account to the yeah. RDA checking account. 
That's the money market account we have. Second. I'm sorry. Right. Can I do this? <laughs> That's right. You can, but you also have to call for the vote. Second that. Uh, no uh, discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 And that's to cover at least one bill, right? Yes. Yeah. And we'll have Susan's bill also. Okay. Right. And uh, the invoice for uh, 325. I haven't told you yet, but that's what it's about. Okay. Uh, the next thing is we've done that now. We're going to go into the audit report. Um, the details of that pretty much. Look at it, and anyway, her invoice is three hundred twenty-five dollars. Uh, so let me do the report, and then you can approve the invoice. So she writes this report. She's compiled the accompanying financial statement as of December thirty-first, twenty nineteen, and twenty eighteen. The management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statement. My responsibility is to assist management in presenting the information in the form of a financial statement. The first page deals with the assets, and you read the liabilities, and the bottom line is our net worth. If you notice the land under receivables, it says note one, it's 210,000. That's what we originally uh, set at a price, and that remains that way under receivables, regardless if we changed it. And if you go back to the end of the page, end of the thing, and read note one, it clarifies what we're talking about. Uh, can you find it? <laughs> I have trouble finding it. You see note one? Oh, note one. Here it is up here. Okay. During 2015, CRA inherited the parcel of land in North Carver at a fair value, fair market value of 210000 The property went through evaluation through engineering and surveys at a cost of 2100 Those were our expense. As of December 31st, 2019 and 2018, the land was taken off the market due to low activity. In January 2018, for six months, the land was on the market for 200000 $200, but no offer was received. During 2019, a new appraisal was completed and it was voted to advertise via state register for 180000 at the at year end, December 31st, 2019 and 2018, the property incurred expenses, $1,807, respectively. The land is held at the original fair market value of $210,000 and as a conditional contribution until the land is sold. That, that's basically the statement I was making. After the sale, the proceeds will be turned over to the town of Carver and the asset will be adjusted on the books. Okay. Uh, $4,000. Oh, here, here's the, um, yeah. There's another note just above it under the receivables. And if you look on 2018, when we got paid, Four thousand seven hundred and four thousand. That note under the paragraph I just read here. During 2015, CRA was awarded reimbursement commitment of nine thousand seven hundred dollars for work completed on the 2013 municipal site review fire police school. And in September of 2015, five thousand of this reimbursement was received. In August of 2019, 8700 was received from the town of Cava for outstanding receivables. And at the at year end, December 31st, 2019 and 8, 2018, outstanding funds due was zero and 8700 respectively, which was mean we got paid. She gives underneath it, she shows you that example. OK. 
Okay. I guess we can turn the page on that one. Any more? Do you have any questions on this page here? No. Okay, let's turn it. Uh, we're, we're talking about revenue, operating expenses, and other income expenses. Very clearly defined here what it is, what they are, what it has been. All right, then we can turn that page. Uh, we're talking about net income and uh, the cash for the balance sheet. So. Okay. Okay. And that's that. Of course, the notes, you can continue to read the whole page, hopefully. You read from top to bottom so you get the general idea of her. Um, like I said, her invoice is um, $325. Um, so I'd like to have a, an approval of that so we can get that paid. All right, well, first of all, I, I think I should make a motion that we approve the uh, com comparative, uh, comparative balance sheet. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Motion to uh, the comparative balance sheet prepa prepared by Valerie Garasa. Yeah, we called it the audit report. It's really an accounting report, really, when you think of it. Yeah. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, now I'll make a motion that we, um, that we uh, pay Valerie Verasso's uh, invoice. Uh, for the preparation of the comparative financial statements in the amount of three hundred twenty-five dollars. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 There's no other bills, right? other than. Say so what? There's no other bills other than. No. No. That's the, that's the only one that okay. was related to that. Um, before we move to the next one, I just wanted to let you know that Rockland Trust. In other words, this report, audit report, I physically had to send it to Rockland Trust. Rockland Trust underwriters look at it, and they make their approval, and that ex that's allows us to continue our credit to the money market for the $30,000. So if you, with the kindness of the, of the board, I'll just quickly read this. Um, it comes from um, the vice president out of the Hyannis office. Uh, recent renewal of your line of credit, uh, 3919500, originally dated 423-2009, and the maximum amount of 30000 Dear Mrs. Layton, in our ongoing effort to simplify your banking experience, we are pleased to inform you that Rockland Trust, the bank, will no longer enforce the credit expiration date provisions of your loan. All references in said line of credit documents to the credit expiration date shall be deleted and the loan shall continue to be due and payable in full on demand by the bank. You may continue to utilize the line of credit for your borrowings unless and until demand for payment is made by the bank or the bank otherwise terminates your line of credit in accordance with the terms of the loan documents. All other terms and conditions of the line of credit documents, including interest, and any other terms of payment in all security and guarantees shall remain in full force and effect. This letter supersedes all prior oral and written agreements or discussions between the borrower and the bank concerning the line of credit. No officer of the bank or other person is authorized to make any oral extensions or other commitments in respect to this line of credit. This letter represents the maximum scope of the renewal of the line of credit provided to the borrower by the bank. We appreciate the opportunity to continue to do business with you. Um, in, in the terms, it says here, originally dated 4-23-2009, every April we were required in our terms of uh, document that was given to us to prepare this accounting report for, from this committee 
going back to the bank so we could continue our money market of $30,000. Now, we only used that money market once, but we paid it all back. And we paid it all back, I gotta tell you, by selling properties. That, that's how we did it. Um, but I want to find out, and tomorrow when we return these documents, the lady in the Rockland Trust here, Jeanette Elliott, Genevieve, Janine, Janine Elliott is the one who serves us. But as far as this, it had to go to Hyannis. So my question to Janine tomorrow will be, can you tell us about this credit expiration date? Does that mean we don't have to provide you with this accounting report? But I will tell you, I think we need to continue to do that regardless if she said yes or no. And the other thing I'm gonna ask her, if we can have the documentation that she's talking about so we can store it because, you know, this is us, this is a contract. We need to have something like that. Okay. So yeah. that's, that's, you know, okay. just pretty simple. Yeah, that's fine. So that's basically that. Um, I all, in your packet is the treasurer's report of the whole entire year, January through December. That, because that was background information that I had to provide. Project, uh, the project tracking was another piece of, I had to provide that so she could collect all the information. And we went through it, so. Is there any, if there's any questions, um, you know, I'm sure you can ask me and it can't be too difficult. But I'm sure if you read through everything, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, the next thing is the Wade Street Management Reimbursement. Well, Joanna Layton decided that way back when, uh, so we got a date on it, back in 2010, in other words, we had an MOU at the town of Carver, uh, for Wade Street. And we had a management fee. And basically what happened is we were gonna sell, now Sharon, you live there, don't you buy there, don't you? Yeah, you do, it's kind of like. About a mile well, away, but okay. I know where it is. We, Brian ran, lives there. We ran, into we ran into different expenses, and according to our MOU, we're entitled to collect that money. So I went back and looked at all of the checks that we've written against our expenses. Um, the bottom line is $2,904.56. The very, very first one, Kathleen O'Donnell, she's our lawyer. Uh, we had to pay her $413. She did some work, probably because A.D. Makepeace was interested in buying the property. We had to spend some money, uh, and we wrote a check out for $1,351.56. Now, it was some expensive, because what A.D. Makepeace had, must have requested something. Now, if Will was here, he probably would have remembered. I didn't. There was no real explanation, but I know we had that expense. So that's what this is. Uh, Kathleen O'Donnell, again, provided us legal services. Uh, so that was $525, and she provided additional legal services uh, in um, December of 2013. So it was a two-year process, three years actually, from 2010 down to 2013. And the last check that we paid her was $615. And so I would like to submit um, Jim this is a bill back to the town as we had done for the previous expenses that we had incurred. Um, and at some point, where's the town administrator? There he is. Um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's too late to catch uh, reimbursement monies because that's what happened when um, when we had asked for this uh, uh, reimbursement for the municipal and, and the very expenses we had, the town administrator said the budget had already been prepared, so it had to move to the next year. Yeah, now, what, you're, what's you're, the time period we're talking about? Excuse me? What time period? 10 years. 2010 to 2013, four different bills. Right. 
we acquired Wade Street property through the town. Yeah. Uh, to the uh, and we had an MOU with the town, mm -hmm. and uh, we we were supposed to have uh, be reimbursed. It fell through. Um, we turned that uh, make peace wanted to buy it, and then they said no, they didn't want it. And it was a ridiculous small sum of money anyway that they were going to pay. Um, so uh, Will St. Clair, I believe at the time, went back to the town and, and select board and turned back, um, turned, turned back that assignment of Wade Street, gave it back to the town. But we failed to have collected our expenses at the time. So how much is it? So money that has been paid into the town's general fund? Say what? Money that has been paid into the town's general fund, you're looking for a reimbursement for that. This is money that the RDA paid out to vendors that it was supposed to be reimbursed by the select right. board right. when the property was given back to them. So, now in the town, so it's not an unpaid bill from like it, no, a no. With the, the invoice numbers that were paid are on this. Yeah. So it's it's twenty nine oh four, two thousand nine hundred four dollars fifty six. Two hundred. Two thousand. Two thousand nine hundred four. Almost three thousand dollars. I'll send you a copy. Of so we're seeking to find a mechanism to to get that money. Back to the so that's what we're talking about. Well, I think the mechanism exists. It's just whether it makes town meeting. If if you look at was it the last town meeting a year ago where we right. got the eighty seven hundred dollars? Right. Yeah, he put in. Uh, he being uh, Mike Mike Milanowski put in on the in. I don't know where exactly where he put it, but he put the reimbursement of four thousand eight thousand seven hundred dollars mm -hmm. for us, and it was approved in. The, whatever, however he presented at that town meeting. It wasn't individual, it was like all just, lumped into yeah, all his other stuff. It was stuff. just so, lumped okay. in under um, well, yeah, I, If you could, uh, you said you're going to get that for me, Sharon? I'll a, get that to you. We'll get an article on this. Uh, well, special. Jim, the process is this. We, we provide this information back to Jim. Jim is the one that uh, would go back and negotiate at you know in the whatever time frame and so it took us two years for the town administrator to be able to put that money that we just received into uh, a sum appropriation you know right. so I have however he still got a couple of years <laughs> <laughs> took him a couple of years to give you a couple of years Joanna I think Rick is saying that he'll try to put something in for yeah, the special like I'll, I'll shoot it to you and um, he can call you if you need any explanations but I think I can summarize it because right. I know where okay. it's coming from All right. these are funds that were laid out these are funds that were laid out when the RDA was in charge of that little pie shaped piece six acres over on Wade Street okay. that the it's now under the auspices of the select board, I think. Yes, um, we gave it back, right. but yeah. and that would have been in 2013 that that uh, yeah, RDA yeah. gave it back. What's the heart? Although I remember, so I was still here. Then. Yeah, you were. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, well. So you remember well, we, all this? No. <laughs> you don't remember well, Wade Street? We didn't give you the bills, and that's Sharon. the problem. We'll give you the, Sharon. yeah, we, we, get, we forgot to give you the bill. We did, if you didn't get the bills, I'm sure you would have seen what they were paying. But anyway, it was pretty well spelled out, so when you get the copy of this, you realize. That sounds simple enough. Okay. Anything else? I think I'm done. Is there a motion to accept the treasurer's? I'll make a motion that we accept the treasurer's report um, as uh, as prepared. Uh, I'll second that with appreciation. Do we need to talk about this? Uh, send back to the tax, you know, approve this as as a no. We don't need, no. We don't need to do that. Okay, that's fine. We just send it in. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 All right. Next up are the um, the well. You can do this. It's the minutes. I lost it. Oh, the minutes. Um, first off, before we're going to circle back. Okay. Um, I see that our town administrator has stopped by. So, uh, Mr. Lafond, if you simply want to reintroduce yourself to the board, 
We've taken your agenda item off and put it till next month. How nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone knows me. Yeah, I know. Can I stand? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's fine. Rip, Take it if you want. Rip LaFawn. My mother calls me Richard. I've uh, been here since May. Middle May again. I was here for 17 years almost from 1996 to, 19, to 2013, just before I buried those, those bills that we're looking for. <laughs> Um, let's see, I pretty much know everybody from the old days. There are some, some different faces, some different people who, uh, um, but I'm very happy to be here. You know where I am. Um, I have been on a whirlwind, meet everybody you can, re-meet everybody that you can uh, to get a sense of what's different. And there is quite a bit. Unfortunately, most of the players are the same, so I have a good rapport with people already. So, um, So other than... You know where to find me, call me, stop in, I'm available. If you don't already have my cell phone numbers, we'll get that to you just to make sure that um, I don't have any single moment free. <laughs> and uh, my wife loves that. So, so uh, anything else that would uh, uh, be well, well, you missed the excitement when I was elected chair of the RDA tonight. Um, oh, so, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we'll... We, probably, we need to communicate, this, this board needs to communicate with you on the um, urban re de uh, development project and see where it is. We've given Jim some suggestions and some instructions, so he will at some point see you in the next day or two. And then if you have any questions, you can call me. Yeah, primarily we've asked uh, Jim to um, invite, strongly in urge uh, George McLaughlin to be here at our next meeting October 13th to give all of us an update on where the entire project stands because really the last time we knew anything was back in February right. and uh, evidently there's been no communication to Town Hall from uh, from Route 44. I've heard nothing. <clears throat> and neither has Jim, so you know we need to get an update of where we stand. Just I know so Jim's been tracking, uh, doing the monthly reports, and before you, Kevin was doing that, and I don't believe Kevin's in any contact either. So. Uh, oh right, for the. That's on the fill. Uh, no, that was for the. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Plumas Street. Inter intersection, Thank Montella you. Street intersection. Yeah. Oh, okay. Project. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. No, Kevin should be getting um, so, there. There are there should be reports coming in uh, on on yeah. any um, fill that has been uh, brought in because it had to pass certain uh, quality standards, okay. Okay. and there was supposed to be a monthly report or quarterly report. Uh, yeah, so I'll I'll do a search in my emails. See All right. Okay. I have that on my calendar. In the meantime, maybe we can have a conversation with Mr. McLaughlin or. Is designee for that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we'd like to. We'd oh, like. Yeah, we we need to know where we stand on this. Yeah. So, uh, if I could, we we asked uh, Jim if we want uh, Mr. McLaughlin present. Yes. Present. Oh, I would absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We didn't want it writing. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Madam Chair? You can go. Thank can you. I, can I? Can I? Can I ask him one more question, please? Also, uh, at the time frame that the town administrator left, um, Sharon has asked Jim to go back if there's any emails that okay. the town administrator had received regarding, uh, you know, this URP and so forth and so on, to make them available. Uh, the other thing too is um, KP Law. Uh, we had a Borofsky question on the land, and KP Law was uh, working on that. And so we need to have some sort of an update from Whatever. KP Law okay. as well. Jim McLaughlin was like secondary. KP Law and town administrator were the prime okay. people on that. So maybe the town administrator has... Some emails on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't have anything in the folder, but I, I don't know what access you have, Jim, but I can, I can talk to Steve Mahoney and find out what access, what, what ability he has to recover emails and how far back. Okay. See where that takes us. And I can just get an update from KP Law. I don't know if uh, you know who at KP Law, what attorney? Jim? Yeah, I have yeah. actually came across the email chain, and that was when there was discussion uh, where 
Mr. McLaughlin and Barassi were getting close. Right. And so they had KP Law kind of intervene to, to do. Oh, that's right. To, to have a, you know, right. to, coming together. To tie to, them together. Yeah, oh, to see yeah. if we could bridge the gap. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this was all under executive session, sure. session so we really so can't we talk really much about it. I can't reveal, but well, not fair. Fair. I just know if, if you know which attorney, but I, I can ask Greg tomorrow. Get yeah. them to find out easily enough. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. Now I go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you skew body. Yeah. <laughs> you can leave the building. Yeah, before it costs you more money. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> thank, you. Again. Thank, you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have minutes of our regular meetings from February 11th and the 25th. Did you have a chance to read them? I did. Yeah, yeah, right. These um, are, these are, these are not going to release them, though. No, this is our regular meetings. The regular meetings. Approving and filing our regular meetings. Okay. Not our executive session. We'll take those up in a separate vote. Okay. Right. I will make a motion to accept the uh, meeting minutes for February 11th and February 25th as written. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. And we have executive session minutes for February 11th and February 25th. Is there a motion concerning those? Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll move to accept them and just don't release them. That's so right. they, there's a motion to move to accept but not release. I will, I will second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any members' comments? Uh, it's good to be back. <laughs> That's about. Are you smiling at the end? Yeah, very good. Okay. It is. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have a lot to catch up on, I guess. We do. We do. Um, and I think meeting with George is going to be uh, key, key to everything, mm -hmm. and, and getting us back into the groove, so to speak. Anything from you, sir? No. No. Uh, in that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We just want to talk about it. We've already said the next meeting is the 13th, correct? Yep. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the next meeting? The 13th? October 13th, 5 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Yep. October 13th, 5 o'clock. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we have our next meeting on, on uh, Tuesday, October 13th at 5 p.m. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I just need to have a little bit more time to and fill out these these oh, paperwork. You do that afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's it's just um, paperwork for signatures on our Rockland Trust. Correct. Right. Okay. All right. So let me ask a third time. All right. So <laughs> I I I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We're adjourned.